Today at shopdap.com, we're gonna show you how to replace and diagnose an EVAP purge valve. So the EVAP purge valve is an evaporative emissions purge valve. This is also called the N80 valve. This actually controls gas vapors to be reburned from your fuel tank. So this could be something that could go bad. It's pretty common. They're pretty inexpensive. I think this one's about 20 bucks on our website. When they go bad, they have a variety of things that you'll get, check engine lights, check gas cap lights, and sometimes, on some occasions, if it's stuck open, you may get a hard start after filling your car with gas. So that is something that could be a problem and eventually can cause a no start condition. So you will wanna not let this thing go bad and they luckily are simple to replace. Now we're under hood, we have to pop this engine cover off. So this is the air filter inside of here, which is a stupid design. And then first we're gonna unplug this mass airflow sensor. There, we have this intake temp sensor here. Now, yours is gonna be connected, most likely because you have this plastic here. This part is not, so we don't have to disconnect that. We do have to remove this spring clamp. Now, if you don't have spring clamp pliers like these, you can use regular pliers to take these things off. You probably will regret it because it's very challenging to stay on there. So we slide this hose back pretty easy like that and then you just pop this engine cover up. So there's grommets, one in each corner here, and you're just gonna pop this thing up. There's one, there's two, three, and four. And then make sure we get our hose all the way cleared off here. And then we should be able to clear this thing up and out of here. Okay, so we're looking right here. This is your EVAP purge valve. And so what we're gonna do with that output test mode is activate it and you should hear clicking here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We erased the faults on this with OBD11 first, but for certain diagnostic things, VATCOM is actually a better scan tool for stuff like this. So OBD11 is a great device for a lot of things. Uh, diagnostic, more heavy diagnostic stuff, uh, VATCOM is a better product. So we've already erased our faults. What we're gonna do is start by going into the output test. So we can go into output test and actually actuate the EVAP purge valve. So we can go to this sequential output test and it'll just scroll through all of them. First one being the EVAP purge valve, which you're gonna click activate. And then you should hear the EVAP purge valve under the hood clicking. So what that test does show us is that the EVAP purge valve is actually working. Now that doesn't tell us that it's flowing properly and most likely given our situation, it's going to mean that we probably have it intermittently getting stuck open due to carbon being in it, uh, which we can test in uh, some other ways. Now what we are gonna find sometimes in this, in this situation it failed this way, if it doesn't actuate when you go to do that, you know your valve is bad and you can proceed with replacing it. We are also going to show you a physical test of the valve itself. Now the correct diagnostic process is going to have us start by measuring the resistance of this valve itself. So first we're going to pop this up, which is pretty simple to do because all you do is kind of pop it off this. You can wiggle back and forth and it'll pop it up and out. The rubber actually stayed on in this case, but uh, that we just slide up and out and put back in. Now we're gonna unplug this. You push down on the tab that's on the top here and you can kind of slide it back like so. You will want to kind of push forward on it first to do that. Now we have two clamps here and, and the other one is actually missing on this car. So there's that. Uh, that is going to be something simple to do. You can kind of squeeze it and then you can work this back. Once you have that off, you're going to just pull this hose out and you can kind of just wiggle it while you pull and it'll allow it out like that. So we're gonna be measuring the resistance between the two pins here, and you're gonna need a multimeter to check that resistance. Now the spec that they have, 15 to 25 ohms is what we're looking for. So make sure you get on both those terminals. So you can see there we're at 17.1 ohms of resistance. So that's within spec, and we know that that's good for that reason. Now that we've tested the valve and it's known to be good as far as its ability elect internally, the electrical part of it, we can check to make sure we have the correct amount of power for this. So we're gonna check the, uh, the terminal to make sure that we have power at that terminal. 
which we can do so by going to pin one and then verifying you have voltage there and you're just gonna wanna get a power and then get a ground source, which we should be able to just use the head here. And then you can see there 12.45 volts. Okay, so the last part of the wiring you're gonna check is gonna be that pin two. So this thing is grounded through the ECM. Now I'm not gonna check this because I already know it works given the circumstance with, uh, with what we tested through output diagnostic test mode. If you wanted to test this, you would have to get a wiring diagram, determine the pin at the ECM you needed to test, take off all this cowling and the connector there and do a resistance test between the terminal here, pin two, and the associated terminal where it goes to the ECM. Again, all you're doing is checking to make sure the wiring is good. In our circumstance, the fact that the valve works means that we know that's not the case. So uh, this is pretty easy to test. And what we're gonna do is reinstall it in the car and show you one final test. So the last thing we have here is these are pinch off pliers. We're going to be pinching off the hose to that valve. So let's look at where we're pinching it off. To diagnose this, what we're gonna do is pinch this hose off. And then we're gonna go into the car with our VAGCOM. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to basic settings. Now, we are gonna start our car. And the car is gonna to need to be warm and you're gonna to go to channel 70, which is your evaporative emissions control test. So once this test runs, you can see it's off right now, but once it runs, this is going to be able to test whether that EVAP system is good. Now, if you have a valve and you just wanna clear a check engine light and run this diagnostic to see if it will fail, it almost certainly will if you have a consistent check engine light. Uh, that will determine whether you, your EVAP stuff will pass or not pass, given the circumstance. So we're gonna wait for this to run, and then, uh, and then we'll take a look. All right, so we ran test on here. We had to wait for the engine to get up to speed. It's gonna run it, and EVAP okay. Now, we're gonna go take that off and see how it runs then. Okay, so we pulled that off. You can hear that valve. You probably can't hear it on camera, but it's running, it's running away like crazy, uh, and that is not a good sound so it actually may physically be going bad and it just hasn't completely crapped out yet but we're gonna have to reset this to have it run a test again you have to erase the fault codes which even if there aren't any because it's stored that known good test in the system by the way this is one of the things you need to set uh, for your car to pass inspection there we go test on and that valve is obnoxiously loud and there we go, it's okay. It tested good even after we had taken that off. That means the valve isn't currently bad because we had that issue and it went back and forth. Uh, this has been a constant issue on this car. Being that the valve's 20 bucks, you probably should replace it anyway and not worry about it. It is something that I am 100% certain will come back and test bad later if we don't replace it now. So we're gonna show you how to replace it. And if you're waiting for that, you probably have already clicked off this video, uh, but we're gonna show you anyway. All right, so real simple, pop it up, unplug it like so. And then we already showed you removing that clamp and that side. This side on our car doesn't have a clamp. Good news for this is it's actually not that crazy of a big deal to not have a clamp on this. You can add one on later. They are a little challenging to get off. The hoses and this clamp, the clamps are gonna be the, the hardest part of this entire job. And then we're just gonna make sure we get the other valve. Now you do wanna make sure that you have the arrow of this pointing in the correct direction. So arrow pointing towards the engine. So now we're gonna go in. So you can lube this, you can spit on it, you can uh, rub it down with some KY, whatever you gotta do to get it in there. Uh, you know, <clears throat> whatever gets the job done. There we go, there on that side, there on this side, plug it in, push this down. And then we're gonna reinstall our clamp, which is gonna be filled with some regret. Oh, look at that, dude. How about that? Made a fool of myself twice. And we can reinstall our engine cover. Okay, so there's this, this pipe out here that kind of gets in the way. So you kind of need to push it towards the back and work it too far towards the back and then pull it forward to get it to sit in place. Now, while you're doing that, you want to line this hose up with where it needs to be and kind of get that pushed on. Make sure you're on your mounts and then you can push down on all your corners and we're going to reinstall our connector here. Click. Same thing with this connector here. You're also going to look for that audible click. 
Then we're going to put our hose clamp pliers in, get this seated in place, and we're done. Okay, once we finish that, we can erase our faults. Now, you can set that basic settings. It will allow the readiness codes to set for this. That is a process that if you were to be doing this for inspection, you would need to do. So uh, you also can just drive the car. The readiness codes will set by themselves over time. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Volkswagen Audi, uh, maybe if you like diagnostic videos like this one, make sure you give a comment below about that uh, so we can get some feedback on the more in-depth diagnostic video. Bye.